Coming up on today's show, as Tesla's share price remains high, another stock split is proposed ahead of a vote this summer. Lotus unveils what it says is the world's first electric hypercar SUV, and Aptera becomes the latest automaker to ditch the steering wheel for a yoke. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. Thanks to continued growth and increasing profits, Tesla's share price has continued to trend upwards this year, with the current prices at the time of recording peaking at over $1,000 per share. And that's led Tesla to submit paperwork to the SEC this week, proposing it executes a stock split, the second in two years. For those who don't know, a stock split is, as the name suggests, a splitting of existing shares into multiple equal parts, with existing shareholders getting a proportionally equivalent number of shares issued to them after the split as they held before it. While this will mean each post-split Tesla share will be worth less than the pre-split Tesla share price, there will be more shares in circulation and ultimately, I think the price of Tesla's shares is likely to continue to rise. The stock split proposal will be voted on by existing shareholders this summer. As gas prices continue to remain high as the illegal invasion of Ukraine by Russia becomes ever more bloody, there's an increasing amount of pressure on governments around the world to transition from fossil fuels to electric vehicles. And while the US is a net exporter of fossil fuels, President Joe Biden is said to be readying an invocation of the Defense Production Act to increase the amount of raw materials available for renewable energy projects and electric vehicles as well as expanding domestic fossil fuel extraction at the same time. Signed into law in 1950 in response to the Korean War, the Defense Production Act gives the president authority to require businesses to accept and prioritize contracts for materials deemed necessary for national defense, and it allows the president to prohibit price gouging of those materials. If invoked, it could pave the way for more domestic mining and refining of materials used in EV batteries, minimizing current production bottlenecks. Aside from kickstarting the modern electric car revolution, Tesla's impacts on the automotive industry haven't been limited to scaring rivals into playing catch up. And this week, we learned that some of the production techniques that Tesla has utilized to increase its output and to decrease production costs, namely heavily roboticized production lines and single piece parts casting, are now being copied by rivals. Which ones? Volkswagen. It's going to be using gigacasting machines similar in size to Tesla's massive Model Y gigacast machines to help it bring its brand new Project Trinity EVs to market. It's also working hard to minimize the number of components in each car to cut complexity and costs. While we don't have a name of any of the Project Trinity cars yet, a brand new production facility is being planned that will cost Volkswagen $2.2 billion. For as long as modern electric vehicles have been produced and sold, there have been a significant number of myths and misconceptions surrounding battery life bandied about. Not helped by some bad news battery stories like Nissan Leaf, premature battery aging and LG battery energy fires, these misconceptions often revolve around the notion that electric vehicle batteries have a lifespan of just a couple of years and then require replacement at a cost of tens of thousands. But former Tesla CTO and founder of Redwood Materials, JB Straubel, stated this week in an interview that he believes most modern EV battery packs will last 15 years or more with an energy storage of more than 80% of their original capacity before they need recycling or replacement. Given JB's company specializes in battery recycling, his verdict is one that carries a lot of credibility. Think of Lotus and the chances are you either think of the work Lotus did to help bring the Tesla Roadster to market or the incredible Lotus badged versions of everyday cars that were popular in Europe in the 1980s. Or perhaps the company's long heritage of niche market sports cars and racing cars, not SUVs. Yet 
This week, Lotus revealed the Electra, a vehicle which is not only the company's first SUV, but the company's first all-electric SUV. Revealed at a special event at the BBC TV centre in West London, the Electra is being hailed by the brand as being the world's first hyper-SUV EV and promises an all-wheel drive train with more than 440 kilowatts at the wheels and a sub three second sprint time. The car's 100 plus kilowatt hour battery pack features 350 kilowatt DC quick charging capability and a target range of 600 kilometers. That's around 373 miles. There's no price listed yet, but well, the four seat styling of this vehicle, while different for Lotus, is not particularly stunning. Frankly, what caught our eye more was the aerial ballet and five minute live action telling of the story of Lotus, which was very different. EV advocates have been saying for decades that moving the world's fleet away from fossil fuels and toward electric vehicles would have dramatic effects on people's health. But now a report from the American Lung Association has put some facts and figures into that assertion. It's just published Zeroing on Health Air report that shifting towards electric vehicles and renewable electricity sources would save the US big bucks. If the US were to ban new ICE car sales by 2035, medium to heavy duty trucks by 2040, and shift its grid mix towards renewables, the report says it would save more than 1.2 trillion dollars in public health benefits over the next 30 years. Additionally, the report says cleaner air would prevent more than 110,000 premature deaths, 3 million asthma attacks, and eliminate 13 million lost workdays due to people taking sick days because of air pollution. It's a report that I hope politicians read and act upon. As supply chain issues are exacerbated by the war in Ukraine, Tesla has found itself struggling to find parts for its solar roof tiles, and as a result, it's paused all installations of them. Tesla actually began to delay the installation of some solar roof projects last December, but as Electrek reports, it's now halted all new installation scheduling, and worse, some customers who were in the process of having their new solar roofs installed have been left with partial installations. Stalls. While Tesla has made the roofs of customer homes weather tight for now with a dry in layer, that layer of weatherproofing is meant to be installed underneath tiles and has a pretty short life when left out in the elements. Tesla says it's producing solar tiles at its New York facility, but it's not clear if it's making enough tiles to meet demand. With customers left in the dark over progress, it certainly doesn't look like it. Electric vehicles are often portrayed as a partisan issue in the political world, but the reality is, as we've noticed before, that support for electric vehicles is becoming a bipartisan thing. This week, Zeta, or the Zero Emission Transportation Association, a lobbying group that exists to represent the interests of EV and zero emission vehicle companies on Capitol Hill, published the results from a national poll that plotted political affiliation with thoughts on EVs. It found that 79% of voters approve of incentives to support EV purchases and 69% support governmental investments in EV infrastructure. When asked what impact EV adoption would have on the environment, our health, jobs and the economy and vehicle safety, the overwhelming majority of voters, Democrat, Independent and Republican, said the impact would be positive. While the most negative thoughts were expressed by Republicans, it does show that EVs make sense to most voters. Akimoto has officially published its fourth quarter and year-end results for 2021, showing increased production output, a slew of new models and R&D, but widening losses. Production output in the year nearly tripled compared to 2020, with 331 new vehicles rolling off the line. This might seem like a tiny amount, but it's worth remembering that to date, all production of the Akimoto lineup has been by hand. With the newly renovated Ramp Production Facility opened this year, the company says it hopes to ramp up to 50,000 vehicles per year in the near future. The company says its revenues were up 102% to $4.4 million last year, with a net loss of $47.6 million. That's equivalent to $1.30 adjusted per share. 
Along with the ongoing parts shortage that's hitting the entire automotive industry, there's been another challenge specific to EVs, finding the raw materials needed to produce EV batteries. Already constrained before the start of the year, the war in Ukraine and subsequent embargoes against Russia has meant that the price of nickel and other essential EV battery metals has soared. And while some battery firms and automakers are feeling the pinch, Bloomberg New Energy Finance disclosed this week that Tesla seems to have been saved from volatile pricing to some extent, essentially by making top secret deals with other sources prior to the start of the year. One such example is a multi-year supply deal with Vail SA, which operates nickel mines in Canada. While Tesla hasn't made details of this agreement public yet, Bloomberg cites several people close to the deal who are currently remaining anonymous. Having multiple sources for raw materials? It's a smart thing to do. When it comes to semi-autonomous driver assistance systems, it's fair to note that while they're all incredibly competent, almost uncanny valley at times, they can also be pretty terrible once in a while. Most people, given some time behind the wheel, either learn to live with or hate their car's semi-autonomous systems. But one customer in Germany just won a court case against Tesla, in which the automaker was forced to repurchase the claimant's Model 3. Why? According to the case, the customer purchased their Model 3 with full self-driving package, which, while not available in Germany right now, did give them access to some restricted autopilot features. And those features? Well, the owner described them like a drunk first-time driver. I'll admit Tesla's autopilot isn't the best on certain sections of road, and I can understand the frustration, but this does feel like a proxy argument because the purchaser spent a lot of money on FSD, and it isn't available yet. And finally, like it or loathe it, Tesla does tend to set a trend in the automotive world. I mean, it helped make over-the-air updates common. It helped push the idea of car route planning for EVs. And by golly gosh, did it make the idea of a steering yoke seem slightly less weird. Since the yoke was first debuted a year ago, we've seen other automakers toy with the idea in both concepts and production vehicles. And this week, Aptera became the latest company to acknowledge that it will be selling its three-wheeled solar electric car with a yoke instead of a wheel. In its latest video update, the company showed off the latest iteration of its interior vehicle design, and the yoke is there for all to see. It's being sold as a more efficient solution, but honestly, I'm not sure if I like it. I saw a yoke from a distance under embargo when I was at Aptera a few weeks ago, and well, I would like to try it before I pass judgment. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't already switched, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It's super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful. I'll be back next week with more awesome content, but if you want to watch more and you haven't already watched Gav in the EV6, follow the link below. I think you'll enjoy it. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Gagete. See you next time.